Let's talk about all the milestones that you have to reach and complete throughout your PhD. Hi everyone, I'm Spencer. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things PhD, career, and beauty. I'm going to use my previous program at MIT Biology as an example, but obviously keep in mind that every single program is going to be different, so your requirements may be different. So obviously your first thing is going to be your application and your interview. So your application is just going to be like a written kind of format, your statement of purpose, talking about why you're interested in getting a PhD, talking about your research, and of course make sure that you include a waiver because you don't want to be paying for those application fees. And then from your application, if they like your application on paper, they'll invite you for an interview. At the interview, you're learning more about the program, learning more from grad students, learning about the labs, seeing if you like the city, all these different cultural kind of fits for you. And of course, during these interviews, you're going to be meeting with professors and then telling them about your research and why you're a good fit for the program. I would say that the interviews are probably the most fun part because you're basically being wined and dined and you're almost there already to get accepted. You're just basically proving to them that you are who you said you are and showing them that you're a good fit for the program. So once you accept whatever PhD program you're going to go to, you join the program and you'll probably start in your coursework in the first year. And so the coursework is just like an overview basically for a lot of different things that you might encounter in your research and they just want to make sure that everybody is going to be on the same page. So there's going to probably going to be a good amount of people who are in your program and they're all going to come from different backgrounds. The first year coursework makes sure that everybody understands and has a solid understanding of that specific field. And this is where a lot of the nuances in the programs comes about. Some programs don't have first year coursework at all and some of them have two years of coursework instead. So you definitely want to check out to see if you want to take that many courses or if you want to take less, look for a program that has less requirements. And then sometime in your first year, you're going to start your rotations. So rotations are basically little snack bite-sized things for your lab and you're understanding if you actually want to join the lab or not. So you're really getting a culture fit, asking all the grad students and the postdocs what they think of the PI and if you can see yourself working for that specific PI. And the rotations can be really long or really short. So from my experience, the actual rotation from entirety was four weeks, which I think is pretty short and you can't really get anything done. But the program said that they wanted it to be that short so that way there's no, there's no stress about having to get a lot done and a lot published. Um, there are programs who have rotations up to like 10 or 12 weeks because then you get a better sense of the lab and you're really like situated in it and then you actually have done some work. Um, I thought that four weeks was actually fine. I felt like I got enough of an understanding of the culture and understanding of how the students work, how the PI works, and I didn't really have to stress about getting a lot done. So after your rotations, you can start working in that lab, you'll join the lab, and then you'll be able to actually do the research that you came to grad school to actually do. And then this is also when you start TAing, if that's a requirement. So for us at MIT Biology, we had to do a second and fourth year TA for one semester in each of those years. And I didn't love TAing by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a great resume point if you are interested in doing a non-scientific role after your PhD. And then sometime shortly after you join the lab, you'll start studying for your qualifying exam or prelim exam, depending on what your program calls it. So this is going to be testing your ability to think critically about various problems in your specific field and your committee is basically going to try to push you as far away from your comfort zone to see how you think about things rationally and if you can come up with like experiments to actually answer those questions that they are asking you. Some people think it's really fun. I thought it was the most stressful thing ever, but everybody has to get through it if you want to get a PhD. It's honestly academic hazing. And then after your qualifying exam, you're basically going to be chugging along doing your research. You'll have yearly check-ins or maybe more than that with your thesis committee and those will be called your committee meetings. And once your committee has decided that you've done enough work, they'll give you a thumbs up or a green light for you to actually defend your thesis. Your thesis defense can look very different depending on the program, but for us, it was your core thesis committee and then you have an outside committee member. And this outside committee member could be somebody who is in your field or like tangentially related, but you wanna have somebody who will understand what your project is about and give any insightful feedback into it that you can then incorporate into your thesis at the end. So for us, our thesis defense was a presentation that you give for about an hour and that's open to everybody in the public. So the community at that school, your friends, your family, basically anybody who wants to learn about what you've done for the past X amount of years in grad school, they can all come learn and you can celebrate and talk about like, thank you for all the help that you've given me throughout the years and also just all the support that you've given me emotionally, even though you weren't understanding what my PhD was about. Um, I think a lot of people who are like the friends and family love hearing the acknowledgement parts of thesis defenses, so it's always fun to have them come. And then after the public part of the thesis defense, there'll be the closed door portion, and that's only for your committee members 
which is your internal and also your external committee member. And they'll basically grill you on your research and then go through your actual like thesis and say, hey, I noticed on this page that you talked about this. Is there a different way that you can like go into that a little bit deeper? Or what other things can you do with that research? And they want to basically push further and understand how this changes the field at large and if it could be applied in other contexts and talk about what the larger findings are for your research. For me, my thesis defense was actually pretty straightforward. My outside committee member was a postdoc in the lab that I wrote a paper with. So he actually was very understanding of what all the research that I did was. And he asked a lot of good questions that were about it. but. It didn't really like, it wasn't crazy. Like it wasn't things that I hadn't thought about before. And that's pretty much true of everything that my committee asked. So it's not anything that's to be stressed about. Definitely is much more of a discussion and definitely does not feel as antagonistic as it did in the qualifying exam. And then after you've had your discussion with your thesis committee, they're basically gonna kick you out of the room and then they're gonna talk amongst themselves about God knows what. And then they'll invite you back in, tell you like, good job, you passed, I'm so proud of you, etc. And then you can basically go leave and you are good enough to have your PhD. They're likely gonna have like edits for your thesis that you're gonna have to incorporate as well. And you're gonna make sure that you have to incorporate all those things before your program deadline for that specific uh, submission time for your thesis. And then you're basically done. So if you do have a requirement for writing a paper as well, then you have to like get your paper done as well. But other than that, you're basically done. And I feel like this transition from working so hard all the time on your thesis to basically having everything done and you kind of feel like it's anticlimactic because you've done so much work over these years and then you just turn it all in in like a stack of papers and that's, that's the end of it. And then in the most ideal situation from there you'll start your job that you hopefully were applying to while you're also writing your thesis. And then you're gonna be an adult and live a happy, rich life after your PhD. Definitely more emphasis on the happy than on the rich because your richness may or may not depend on what your actual career is and a PhD definitely does not guarantee you to make a lot of money after you graduate. So that's basically getting your PhD in a nutshell. Let me know what other questions you have about getting a PhD in the comments and thanks for watching.